Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you for sticking with me or if you're new to the channel, please go ahead and you know get caught up. The past few episodes we've been uh, discussing the MVVM architecture that Google uh, is pushing for. We've created our repository class, we have our view model class. Um, I'm actually gonna, just going to go ahead and clean up the little delay stuff that we did uh, in the last episode. And uh, we'll be right back to where we should be exactly so um, uh, Okay, so yes, we have our view model. We have our repository We are initializing our view model because we require a context here to be passed in uh, From our main activity so that the repository can do its thing and we actually have our home fragment here uh, observing changes to the underlying list of data and then uh, we have the issue right now of our detail screen is just commented out, right? And that's because previously we would actually have an attraction that was passed to us. Uh, sorry, we wouldn't have the entire attraction, but we would have an attraction ID that was passed to us. Um, as you can see here, this is the callback for when a particular item in our list is clicked. I'm not going to do it because it will crash the app. But uh, we run this block of code here when they click on something. So you can see that it give, we, we supply the action ID to this callback. Uh, we create our navigation directions, passing in this attraction ID, and then we navigate with these directions. And you can see here we're moving from the home fragment to the attraction detail fragment. And then inside this attraction detail, we actually have the uh, SafeArgs plugin all set up. So we're able to fetch the argument out of uh, you know, via nav args, but essentially out of the bundle that's required for this fragment. And then we can find the particular attraction that we're looking for based on that ID. But we've removed this list of attractions that was just the, the dummy data list at the activity level. And now it's actually embedded inside of this live data um, that exists. So we have this live data that is for the home fragment. We're going to create another live data for the attraction detail fragment. And so previously, the uh, as we just covered, this fragment here received an ID and then fetched the corresponding attraction that matched that ID. And there's nothing wrong with that. That works fine. It's 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 good. It wasn't crashing the app. It was getting getting us to a state that we could end up doing all these other things that we were able to do. Uh, but it's not really. Um, it can be done better, let's say. So, uh, where are we? We will create another live data. So let's say the live data is going to be called the selected attraction live data. It's going to be a mutable live data of type attraction. What we're going to do here in the view model is we're going to say on uh, attraction so selected with the attraction ID that was selected. And so what we're going to do here is we are going to find, we're going to do what the attraction detail fragment was doing. Again, a little bit of business logic if you think about it. Um, we're going to extract that away from the detail fragment, have it inside of our view model class, which is where that, that logic should lie, uh, and then you know, we will, we will post the correct attraction to this live data that this bad boy will listen to. So we first need to find uh, the correct item in the list, right? So we're just going to say if, well, let's just do it this way. Attraction list live data value find the one where its ID equals, nope the attraction ID. Oh, sorry. And then, okay. So we've a little, little bit of Kotlin, uh, Kotlin glory going on here, uh, but we have essentially set or created a small variable called attraction where we look through our list of live data 
the value is just actually the list of attractions that exist inside of this live data object. Uh, and then we run the find function on it. So it's very, very similar to what this was doing, right? It was by lazy. It was a, a list of objects. We called find. We said it.id equaled the safe args attraction ID. So we're doing the exact same thing, except we're not doing it in the fragment layer. We're doing it in more so of like the data layer. So we're looping through our list here. We're finding the one whose ID uh, equals the ID that was passed into this function. And if this is null, so this little Elvis operator, because this, there's two reasons why this can uh, be null, uh, or, or this, this variable here can be null. Uh, the first reason is the fact that value here is actually uh, a nullable, yeah, so I guess you can see here, uh, if the data is not, does not equal not set. So if it equals not set, uh, it returns null. So if we essentially try to reference the data that exists inside this live data, uh, before anything has been updated or before it has been set for the first time, uh, it, it can return null. Now in this use case, in this case uh, for our application, I'm going to go ahead and say it's impossible for us to find us uh, to find our way in that state. Uh, so we could, instead of this question mark here, force this to be non-null because if we just try to operate on it, it'll actually tell us, hey, you know, like this is possibly uh, the value could be null. So we're just going to leave it as a question mark because why not? It's a little bit safer, but we shouldn't find ourselves in that issue. However, if we were to run uh, the find function on this list and not find something in the list that matched this predicate, i.e. found didn't find the proper ID or the proper attraction by its ID, it would also return null. So there's a few reasons why this can actually, this block of code here can return null. And so what we're doing is we're saying if at the end of running this code, if this attraction variable is null, we're going to run this, which is just return. So we won't end up, you know, posting to our live data. Uh, and so we can find ourselves in a weird state at that point, but I'm not too worried about it. We're going to um, assume the positive case here that everything's going to just work because it, it should work. It's a very simple application at the moment. Uh, and so then we just take our live data and we post that value, uh, this attraction to it. So instead of doing this, well, we don't need that anymore. Instead of doing setting the attraction to be that, we don't need that anymore. And so now we have this issue here of like, oh, okay, well, um, what do we do? So we can reference our activity view model. Now you see there's two different live datas here. We have the selected attraction live data. We're going to observe that one with our view lifecycle owner. We're going to rename this uh, little variable that gets passed in, call it attraction. And then at this point, we are going to cut all of that out and paste it in here. And now the attraction that we're referencing is the attraction that was given to us in the live data. So we still have an issue here. Da, 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 da. I see, I see. Uh, all right, so just for simplicity here, uh, I'm not a super big fan of this, but we can do it this way. Actually, no, this is going to be fine. Attraction list, live data, no, selected attraction, uh, value, otherwise we return. True. Yeah, because we're going to consume it. Um, so again, we can, you know, we can access our view model anywhere in this code, anywhere in this fragment level. Uh, it doesn't have to be in, you know, on view create. It doesn't have to be in a lifecycle callback or anything like that. Um, this is when the option has been selected. We're actually going to go ahead and fetch, uh, just because we don't have the attraction at this point stored as a global variable in this class. Instead, we're referencing it in the activity view model inside the live data. So we can just go ahead and apply the exact same logic here. We're just going to find the view model or sorry, we're going to find the live data inside the activity view model. We're going to call value on it. And if that value is null, then we're just going to return. Nothing's going to happen in, in when they click this little icon. Uh, but otherwise, if they, if it is fine, if it isn't um, uh, null, we're going to just go ahead and do what we were doing beforehand. So ideally, 
looking at this code, uh, there's no reason that this application should crash anymore. And the beauty of having this information stored in a global uh, location here with the view model is we you can see here the safe arcs is actually not being used so if we were to go ahead and delete that um, we can clean up all these imports always feels good and then we can actually even take a look at our nav graph and also um, interesting so we're gonna actually lose our deep link functionality at this moment with the current implementation Hmm. Well, that's exciting. We can revisit that. So I'm going to leave that in there uh, for now, but we don't need it anymore in the fragment level, which is uh, good news. And then in our home fragment, instead of doing... Uh, of course we need that. We're going to lose deep linking functionality for right now. And if we want to revisit that, we can. Um, but where am I here? Home fragment. Um, let's go ahead and just delete this. We need to rebuild it because we modified this nav graph. And as we know, this uh, all this information that's here ends up getting rebuilt every time at at uh, at build time for us. So we um, we just need to run that really quick. And then once it's completed here, we can do something with our attraction ID that was passed in to us, right? So we can say activity view model uh, on attraction selected, passing in the attraction ID. And then we can also nav, uh, what's it called? nav controller, navigate r.id action home fragment to attraction detail fragment, right? It's because we no longer need to pass in the ID, we can, um, we can just, you know, we can just navigate to that fragment. That fragment is going to be observing the live data that we end up updating here. So as long as before, well, it doesn't even matter uh, which way we do it, we can go that way as well. Um, as long as we notify this uh, attraction has been selected, once we navigate to that additional details file, uh, it will just observe the correct one. So as you can see here, it looks like literally nothing has changed. Uh, however, under the hood, a few things have. So I also wanna see, yeah, so it's happening basically instantaneously, which is fantastic. Um, However, there is one thing that I do want to show you here that it's just going to bother me to do it that way. Um, that will make this a little bit, a little bit more interesting. So again, we're going to do view model scope. Don't worry about this. I just want to show you uh, things happening asynchronously. So let's go with delay for two seconds. Uh, return at launch. So again, when the attraction is selected here, we're going to go ahead and actually delay this code from running for two seconds. So the first time that we click this, we should actually see a blank screen here. Wow. Okay. So some of the UI is there, but the data isn't, and then boom, right? So kind of shows you that there's a little bit of a, a hole in our UI there a little bit, but uh, like we should actually have a loading state, let's say. But um, more interestingly enough, this has our information about Solly. Yeah. And then let's go to Plipitza Lakes. Boom. So you saw initially that it was Solly, and then the data changed to the Plipitza Lakes information. And if we just go ahead and just change it again to Zadar, you'll see this information is old, and then the new information comes in. And so the reason that I wanted to call this out is because there's actually a good amount going on under the hood here where this live data at the at because it's scoped at the activity level, it is still alive when we go to here, right? And so I can show you that very easily by um, calling the on resume, and then we're gonna go ahead and just rebuild this really quickly, uh, and then we're gonna hit a breakpoint, and I'll actually show you that this data exists, right? So we're gonna go to Solly, it's gonna be two seconds, and that information is gonna come. We're gonna go ahead and stick this on there, and if we go back, we hit on resume in the home fragment. 
let's go ahead and take a look at the activity view model, the selected attraction live data. Uh, I don't want to click all through all that, so let's just call value. And yeah, you can see here, you know, we're inside Solly at this very moment. We have, uh, we had, or inside this information here, uh, this live data exists the attraction for Solly. And so it's because the, um, the live data is scoped at a layer that exists outside of the fragment. Right? So even though this fragment has been destroyed when we navigate backwards, the view model is still at the activity level. And if you remember, the activity is the container for both of these screens. So that's why when we end up clicking on, let's say, Zagreb, it immediately, this fragment here, immediately on OnView created, starts observing this uh, selected attraction live data. And the live data is like, well, we have, we have data already because we, ha we have it from the previous screen, right? And so then we... Um, we, we're just going to post that data to the observer and that's going to run right here, right? And again, oh, so we're already there. Uh, go ahead and turn that off. We don't need that anymore. Uh, so we had Zagreb in there, right? And if we click Solly, immediately before this screen is, is even, uh, uh, you know, we're still on the home, the home fragment, you can immediately see that this information has been... Uh, has been posted to our observer and you can see in the uh, you know attraction details says Zagreb so it still has the information from here but you can clearly see in the UI we clicked on Sally and so if we end up clicking the play button again you see well so it happened very quickly because the two second timer was going off while we were on that breakpoint but uh, let's just go this way real quick so we'll do Zagreb and then you see the you see the uh, the, the second breakpoint get hit once it was posted again once this um, once this code had completed, and then you can see now it has the correct information for whatever we clicked. So I went ahead and just you know took the liberty of putting in this two second delay because uh, to to actually show you that to show you that there is data that exists inside of the uh, the view model because or inside the live data because the view model scoped at a global location and because we observe the um, because we observe the live data immediately the 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 code says yeah okay you know you're you're an observer in a valid life cycle state so here's the data and then two seconds later hey here's more data and this just happens to be the one that the user clicked on so um, Hopefully that kind of shows you a little bit more about how some of this is working under the hood. Yeah, we don't need that. Um, and I guess the benefit, you know, of, uh, of doing things this way, or, or I guess the downfall in this case is a downfall, but the benefit is that we are now following more of the reactive approach, right? It's not so much that this screen needs to care about uh, hey, you know, what was the ID? Okay, go find the correct attraction for that ID um, and then, you know, display all the data on screen. No, this screen's job as the attraction details screen is to actually display the attraction details, right? So it shouldn't care about any of the logic of finding the correct attraction. It should only care about the logic to display the actual attraction. And so that's why we've kind of gone ahead and created a new live data that that is observed here and when this information is uh, populated and and posted to the live data our code ends up running and we we get this um, you know all, all the information displayed on screen correctly one more thing that i didn't do but hopefully you can imagine it being the case is this little location icon thing that we added right we were actually fetching the attraction from the live data's value uh, when they click the menu item location. So if we went back to that two second delay thing that we had, if you moved into the screen and it initially said Sally and then it was pending that the information was gonna be updated to Zagreb, you could click on this location and it would actually have the location of, uh, uh, of, of Sally or of the outdated data um, and, and it would take you to, the, you know, it would start the whole maps procedure that we covered in a previous episode with the wrong information. And then you would return to the screen and the data would be, you know, completely different.
uh, I mean, it would be what you selected, uh, but it wouldn't be, um, you know, the, the information that you were looking at at this moment in time. So uh, hopefully that provides a pretty good, uh, you know, a comprehensive overview of the observer pattern, the, the, the job of the view model, the job of the repository, and, and then specifically at the view layer, uh, how we can remove some of that, you know, business logic code and some of the other, uh, you know, I guess, keep things separated where they should be. And now this detail fragment only has a dependency on a particular view model, having the correct live data inside that view model that it can observe so that it can draw everything on the screen accordingly. And now you can see that because the, the code runs so quickly and it's not all that difficult of a computation, basically as you select the, the correct item, you are, uh, or as you select an item on this screen, it is just presented to you on this screen without any flickering or flashing or that, you know, anything that that two second delay kind of provided. So um, hopefully this now starts to make a little bit more sense. Uh, you could see the reactive approach that this screen and the detail screen now have. Um, and hopefully you can kind of see how the data is actually um, fueling the, the screen and how it actually just kind of the observer takes over and uh, is the driving force behind why things get posted to the screen or posted to the UI or, or, or what have you. Um, so we're going to actually cut the video here. It's a little bit longer than I was expecting, but um, we will leave it like this and then we'll actually go ahead and uh, and probably also showcase how we can use this uh, view model to provide further communication because really we're using this activity scoped view model to communicate between two fragments, right? Between these two screens, the detail and this home screen. Uh, but we can also use the, uh, the, the centralized view model to communicate out to our activity uh, instead of actually having to call activity, you know, and cast it as the main activity, etc. cetera. Um, so we'll go ahead and dive into that in the next episode. So I hope to see you there. Remember to like, comment, and or subscribe, especially if you want to keep up to date with all the content that's being put out. It would be much appreciated if you could leave me a like if you've made it this far in the video. And um, I'll catch you in the next one.